What if I told you the most powerful strategy for success isn't complicated at all? That four simple lines of code once defeated the most brilliant strategic minds in the world? This isn't science fiction. It's called the tit-for-tat strategy, and it's shockingly simple. Always start by being nice. If someone's nice to you, be nice back. If someone's mean to you, be mean back. But always be ready to forgive and start over. Sounds too simple to work, right? That's what the world's top mathematicians and computer scientists thought too. They were wrong. Today, I'm going to show you how this ridiculously simple approach beats sophisticated algorithms with thousands of lines of code, why it appears throughout nature, and how it can transform your relationships, career, and life. The most successful people aren't playing 4D chess. They're playing tit for tat. And after this video, you will be too. Game theory, not what you think. You've probably heard of game theory. Maybe you think it's some super complex math that only geniuses understand. After all, it was developed by legends like John Nash, yes, the beautiful mind guy, and John von Neumann, who helped build the first nuclear bombs and computers. These weren't just smart people. They were once in a generation brilliant. But what if I told you their most powerful insight is so simple a child could understand it? Game theory isn't just for mathematicians or economists. It's about something we all do every day, making decisions when our success depends partly on what other people choose. Should you help your teammate with their project? Should you share your lunch with a friend? Should countries reduce pollution even if others might not? These aren't just random choices, they're games, strategic interactions, where what you do affects me and what I do affects you. And in these games, we often fall into a famous trap called the prisoner's dilemma. The iterated prisoner's dilemma. You've probably heard of the prisoner's dilemma before. It's that famous scenario where two suspects have to decide whether to stay silent or betray each other. If they both stay silent, they each get a light sentence. If one betrays while the other stays silent, the betrayer goes free and the loyal one gets hammered. If they both betray, they both get medium sentences. The classic dilemma shows why rational people often make choices that lead to worse outcomes for everyone. When thinking only of themselves, both prisoners betray each other, getting medium sentences instead of the light sentence they could have gotten by cooperating. But here's what makes the prisoner's dilemma so fascinating. In the real world, we rarely face these situations just once. Think about it. You don't just interact with your classmates, colleagues, or family members one time, and never again. You see the same people day after day, week after week. You remember how they treated you last time, and they remember how you treated them. This is where the iterated prisoner's dilemma comes in, the version where you play the same game repeatedly with the same person. Now, it's not just about making one smart choice. It's about developing a strategy that works over dozens or hundreds of interactions. Should you always cooperate, hoping others will do the same? Should you always betray to protect yourself? Should you try to establish patterns, hold grudges, forgive mistakes? Suddenly, the game becomes much more like real life and much more interesting. Because now, your reputation matters. Your history with the other person matters. The possibility of future interactions. So, what strategy would actually work best in this much more realistic scenario? The tournament that changed everything. In 1980, Professor Robert Axelrod from the University of Michigan decided to find out. He invited the world's top strategic thinkers to submit computer programs that would play the prisoner's dilemma against each other repeatedly. These weren't ordinary programs. Some had thousands of lines of complex code designed to analyze patterns, predict behavior, and outsmart opponents. Some were aggressive, always betraying. Some were pushovers, always cooperating. Others were incredibly sophisticated using advanced statistical models to maximize their advantage. Imagine a chess tournament where every grandmaster brought their best strategy. Except this wasn't just about chess. This was about the fundamental patterns of cooperation that shape our world. When the dust settled, the winning strategy shocked everyone. It wasn't the most complex. It wasn't the most aggressive. It wasn't the most forgiving. It was tit for tat, the four-line strategy I mentioned at the beginning. Remember those four simple rules? Always start nice. If they're nice, be nice back. If they're mean, be mean back. But always be ready to forgive and start over. That's it. That's the whole thing. The most sophisticated strategic minds in the world, with their complex algorithms and advanced game theory knowledge, all beaten by something so simple, a middle schooler could understand it. But why does this ridiculously simple strategy work so well? 
and how can you use it to completely transform your relationship? Why Tit for Tat Works? Lessons from Vampire Bats. The most fascinating aspect of Tit for Tat isn't just that it won the tournament, but why it won. Let's break down how it works using a remarkable real world example that scientists have studied extensively vampire bats. Vampire bats face a brutal survival challenge. They need to drink blood every 60 hours or they starve to death. But on any given night, about one third of bats fail to find food. This creates a perfect, natural, iterated prisoner's dilemma. When a bat finds blood, it has two options, keep all the blood for itself or share some with a hungry neighbor. The selfish choice seems obvious, keep all the blood and maximize survival chances. Yet researchers discovered that bats regularly share blood with their hungry neighbors through regurgitation. Yes, as gross as it sounds. Why would they do this? Because they're implementing an instinctive version of tit for tat. First, bats start by being cooperative. When a bat has extra blood, it shares with hungry neighbors. This mirrors the first principle of tit for tat. Start by cooperating. Second, bats keep track of which other bats have shared with them in the past. If a bat has previously shared blood with you, you're much more likely to share with that bat when it's hungry. This reflects the second aspect of tit for tat. Respond to cooperation with cooperation. Third, if a particular bat repeatedly refuses to share when it has extra, other bats stop sharing with it. Scientists have observed bats actively refusing to help certain individuals who never reciprocate. This demonstrates the third component of tit for tat. Respond to defection with defection. Finally, if a previously selfish bat begins sharing again, the others will eventually resume sharing with it. The slate can be wiped clean, aligning with tit for tat's willingness to restore cooperation. This strategy isn't based on moral judgments about fairness or kindness. It's simply the most effective survival strategy. By sharing blood today, a bat increases its chances of receiving blood when it's starving tomorrow. The correlation between this behavior and survival is clear. Bats that don't develop these sharing relationships have significantly higher mortality rate. The counterintuitive insight is that starting with cooperation rather than selfishness creates the conditions for a network of reciprocal relationships that increases everyone's survival chance. It's mathematically optimal, not morally superior. Nature's optimization algorithm. The bad example isn't an isolated case. Similar patterns appear throughout nature, suggesting that evolution has repeatedly converged on tit for tat-like strategies because they're mathematically optimal for survival, not because of any moral considerations. Cleaner fish remove parasites from larger predatory fish that could easily eat them. The large fish refrain from eating the cleaners not out of kindness, but because doing so would mean they wouldn't get cleaned in the future. Red-winged blackbirds warn neighboring nests of predators, even though those neighbors compete for resources. Why? Because those same neighbors will warn them when predators approach their nest. From microorganisms to primates, we see similar patterns everywhere. The startling conclusion from both computer simulations and biological observations is that cooperation often emerges as the mathematically optimal solution in repeated interaction, even among entities with no concept of morality, operating purely on genetic programming or simple rules. This explains why tit for tat dominated the computer tournament. It's not just a good strategy, it's an optimization algorithm that nature discovered through millions of years of evolution before humans even existed. The counterintuitive power of simplicity. The tit for tat story challenges one of our most fundamental assumptions, that complex problems require complex solutions. We see this bias toward complexity everywhere. Organizations create elaborate hierarchies and processes. Governments develop intricate regulations. Individuals overthink social situations and relationships. Yet the four-line algorithm that beats sophisticated strategies offers a powerful counterpoint. Sometimes simplicity isn't just easier, it's actually more effective. The mathematics of game theory shows why starting with cooperation and repeated interactions tends to produce better long-term outcomes than starting with defection. It's not about being nice in a moral sense. It's about creating the conditions where mutually beneficial exchanges become possible. The algorithm succeeds because it combines four mathematical properties that optimize outcomes in repeated interactions, an initial cooperative move that allows for mutual cooperation, a conditional response that prevents exploitation, a lack of complicated pattern seeking that might misinterpret random events, 
and clarity that allows others to understand and predict its behavior. This isn't about prescribing a moral code. It's about understanding a mathematical pattern that appears in everything, computer tournaments, to vampire bat colonies, to human relationships. The strategy works not because it's morally superior, but because it's mathematically optimal in environments where interactions repeat and actions have consequence. The ultimate insight isn't that we should be nicer people. It's that the simplest solution is often the most effective, even for the most complex problems. And that's a lesson that applies far beyond game theory.